Are you tired of the 9 to 5 grind, feeling like you're stuck in a never ending cycle? Or ever wondered how to transform your passion into a thriving, million dollar business, all within just a year? Today, we're diving into the game changing book 12 Months to $1 Million by Ryan Daniel Moran. Consider this your road map, your treasure map, even, guiding you through three exhilarating stages grind, growth, and gold. That will take you from zero to a seven figure business. So grab your notepad, get comfy, and let's embark on this extraordinary journey to unlock your million dollar dream. For many of us, building a million dollar business seems like an unreachable dream. But this is a notion that needs to be challenged. With enough determination and commitment, it is indeed possible. But how can you go about doing so? The book lays out a 10 step roadmap to building a million dollar business from zero in just one year and then selling it for a big payday. It's simple and easy to follow. The book breaks down the journey into three main stages. First, the grind for months 1 to 4 helps you get started. Next, the growth for months 5 to 9 shows you how to make your business bigger. Last, the gold for months 10 to 12 helps you make even more money and get ready for what comes next. Let's look at each section. Part 1, The Grind for Months 1 to 4 in the initial stage called the grind, the book argues that many businesses falter because they start with a product rather than a market and customer. It's like a mountaineer choosing their gear before knowing what kind of mountain they'll be climbing. The grind guides entrepreneurs through the process of identifying a suitable market, one that isn't just willing, but eager to buy what you have to offer. Finding the right market is like searching for a treasure map that leads to hidden gold. The book makes it clear that the market is not just any group of people but a community with a shared need or problem that you can solve. 1. Choose a profitable product that you're passionate about selling. Imagine you're at a crossroads and each path leads to a different mountain to climb. You need to pick a mountain that's not just climbable but one you'll enjoy. This is where your interests and skills come into play. In the book, Moran suggests that you should look for markets related to your hobbies and skills. Make sure it's something you're passionate about, as this will sustain you through the challenges ahead. Choosing a profitable product that you are passionate about selling is the first step in creating a successful business. Moran advises using the simple equation, profit equals sales minus costs, to determine whether a product is profitable or not. 2. Assess demand and competition. Now that you've got your list, it's like having a selection of treasure maps. But before you start digging, you need to make sure there's actually treasure to be found. Research your shortlisted product ideas using platforms like Amazon, Google Trends, and product-specific forums. Look for signs of demand, but not oversaturation. You need to find a market and customer that has room for you but is already somewhat established. 3. Apply the 5 people rule. This is where the rubber meets the road. Can you find at least five people who are already buying a similar product or service in your chosen market? If yes, you struck gold. Within your chosen market, identify at least five individuals who are already purchasing a similar product or service. This proves that there's a willing customer base for your product. 4. Validate the market. Finally, it's time to have a heart-to-heart -heart with your potential customers. In the book, Moran recommends methods like running small ads to gauge interest or even directly reaching out to people in social media groups related to your business idea. Ask them about their pain points, what they love about existing products, and what they wish could be improved. This is your chance to refine your product idea and really get to know the community you'll be serving. Moran says, your first task is to find a market that pulls your product out of you, not the other way around. One of the most common mistakes new entrepreneurs make is pouring all their energy into creating a perfect product without first identifying who their customer is. The truth is, no matter how great your product is, it won't matter if there's no one willing to buy it. That's why it's crucial to focus on finding and understanding your customer first. Knowing who your customer is allows you to tailor your product to meet their specific needs, ensuring that you're not wasting time and resources on something the market doesn't want. By understanding your target customer, you increase the chances of hitting the bullseye when you finally launch your product. 
Do's and don'ts for the grind. Here are some do's for this section. 1. Identify your target customer. Before anything else, know who you're selling to. What are their needs, wants, and problems that you can solve? 2. Test your product quickly. Launch a minimum viable product to get real-world feedback. You won't know what works until it's tested in the market. 3. Adjust based on feedback. Listen to what your early customers are saying. Make quick changes to meet their needs better. Avoid these following don'ts. 1. Don't aim for a perfect product. Spending too much time perfecting the product can delay your market entry and make you miss out on valuable feedback. 2. Don't ignore customer needs. If you are not solving a problem or fulfilling a need, people won't buy from you. 3. Don't be afraid to pivot. If something isn't working, be willing to change course quickly. In the grind section, speed is your friend. Every sale matters a lot. You need to make fast, bold decisions when you're first starting out. Don't spend too much time creating a perfect product for months, only to realize there's nobody who wants to pay for it. In this stage, be comfortable that you won't get everything right. Reflect and adjust your plan in a timely manner. With that, you're ready to leap into the next exciting phase of your journey. Growth. Part 2. The growth for months 5 to 9. Once you have a product that fits a specific need, it's all about scaling up. In the growth phase, the focus is on scaling your operations effectively. This is where the snowball is starting to build. You want to roll out as many more products as you can handle. Strategies include leveraging platforms like Amazon FBA, expanding product lines, and nurturing an authentic online brand. In this section, you don't need to make as many decisions the second time around, so keep it simple and stay focused. 1. Leverage Platforms Think of this step as hiring a team of experienced treasure hunters. In the book, Moran highlights the importance of leveraging established platforms like Amazon FBA. Why start from scratch when you can utilize Amazon's extensive customer base and shipping infrastructure? You tap into a massive audience without dealing with the nitty-gritty of fulfillment. 2. Expand product line. You've got one product that's a hit, it's like you found one piece of the treasure. Now, how about finding the rest of it? Moran suggests adding complementary products to your existing lineup. For example, if you're selling specialty coffee beans, why not introduce high-quality coffee grinders or unique coffee mugs? This allows you to maximize revenue from your existing customer base. 3. Build an online brand. Imagine you're not just a treasure hunter, but a legendary one. Your name is known far and wide. Building an online brand is similar, it makes you memorable and trustworthy. Moran advises using social media, blogs, or even YouTube to establish your brand's voice and personality. Share valuable content that resonates with your market and shows off your expertise. 4. Automate and Delegate Picture this. Your treasure hunting is so well organized that it practically runs itself. Moran emphasizes that in the growth phase, your business shouldn't need you to operate day-to-day. -day. Start automating processes wherever possible and delegate tasks that don't require your unique skills. Maybe you bring in customer service reps so you can focus on strategy, or you use automated email marketing to keep customers engaged without lifting a finger. Moran says, in the growth phase, you don't have a business until you remove yourself from it. 5. Optimize for customer lifetime value. It's not just about finding treasure, it's about maximizing its value. For example, if you find a rare gemstone, wouldn't you want to know how to extract its maximum worth? Similarly, Moran talks about upselling, cross-selling, and subscription models as ways to increase the value of each customer. For instance, if someone buys a yoga mat from you, offer them a discounted bundle with yoga blocks and straps. Do's and don'ts for the growth. Here are some do's. 1. Scale successful products. Once you find what works, focus your energy and resources there. 2. Invest in marketing. Now's the time to put money into advertising and other growth channels. 3. Track your metrics closely. 
Watch things like customer acquisition costs and lifetime value to make sure you're growing sustainably. Avoid these following don'ts. 1. Don't ignore cash flow. Rapid growth can eat up money. Make sure you've got enough to cover expenses. 2. Don't neglect customer service. Happy customers are repeat customers. Keep them satisfied as you scale. 3. Don't diversify too soon. Stick to what's working. Expanding your product line too early can spread you thin. By the end of the growth phase, your business should be like a well-oiled treasure hunting machine, capable of finding and maximizing treasures consistently and efficiently. Now, you're not just a treasure hunter, you're a legend in the making. Onward to the gold phase. Part 3. The Gold for Months 10-12 to Moran says the gold is not just in the profits you earn, but in the person you become in the process. The gold phase is where you take your streamlined business and optimize for profits. In this stage, you can start experimenting with different types of advertising to figure out what really works for your product. This is also the stage where you can finally start paying yourself and become a genuine full-time entrepreneur. Your job here is to build revenues, find buyers, and plan your exit or expansion. 1. Diversify Revenue Streams You struck gold, but why stop there? In the book, Moran advises not to put all your golden eggs in one basket. Diversify by exploring additional sales channels beyond Amazon or your primary platform. Ever thought about wholesaling or exploring partnerships? Now's the time to spread your wings. 2. Invest in Intellectual Property Think of this as converting your physical treasure into valuable certificates of authenticity or trademarks. Moran emphasizes the importance of investing in intellectual property like patents or copyrights. It's not just about protecting what you have, it's about adding another layer of value to your business. You essentially make it more difficult for competitors to encroach on your territory. 3. Strengthen Customer Relationships You've won the treasure, now win the loyalty of your customers. It's not just about one-off transactions anymore. You want to turn first-time buyers into lifelong fans. How about starting a loyalty program or perhaps a customer-exclusive newsletter filled with special offers and value-added content? The more you nurture these relationships, the more your community will grow, offering you endless streams of revenue. Number 4. Systemize Everything Picture a treasure management system so seamless that it can operate without you. That's the dream, right? Moran suggests that you should be able to step away from the business for a month without causing a disruption. That means robust systems for inventory management, customer service, and quality control. Essentially, make yourself replaceable in the day-to-day -day operations. 5. Plan your exit or expansion. Reaching the gold phase doesn't mean your journey has to end. You've got options. Moran outlines two paths. Either sell your business for a big payday or expand even further, perhaps even going global. The treasure chest could be just the beginning of a much larger empire or the ticket to your next big adventure. Do's and don'ts for the gold. Here are some do's. 1. Optimize operations. Make everything more efficient, from production to customer service. 2. Diversify revenue streams. Add complementary products or services to increase your average transaction value. 3. Plan for the future. Whether it's an exit strategy or further expansion, have a plan for what comes next. Avoid these following don'ts. 1. Don't rest on your laurels. The moment you think you've made it, someone else is ready to take your spot. 2. Don't ignore intellectual property. Protect your brand and products through trademarks and patents. 3. Don't forget to automate and delegate tasks. Document processes and create systems so the business can run without you being involved in every decision. In the gold phase, your treasure isn't just something you've found, it's something you continue to multiply and protect. You're no longer just a successful treasure hunter, you're a treasure magnate, a legend in your own right. Whether you choose to keep expanding your empire or set sail for new adventures is entirely up to you. But rest assured, you've cracked the code, and you're living the dream. There you have it. 
I've just walked you through the 10-step plan from the book 12 months to $1 million from zero. You've learned how to start with the grind, grow big in the growth, and hit the jackpot in the gold. If you follow these steps, you could turn your dream into a million-dollar business in just one year. Thank you for watching this video, and if you found this helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more book summary videos.